everyone, Jennifer here, and I finally have a reader questions answered video for you. This will probably be two videos because I have so many questions and I don't want the video to be too long, so I'll probably break it up into two parts. A while ago at the beginning of the new year I asked you to submit me any questions that you wanted me to answer on the blog, and you did, and so I'm finally getting to them today. And uh, if you didn't know about that and you'd like me to answer a question in a future video, just be sure to leave it in the comment section below. Okay, let's jump right into the questions because we have a lot of them. Terry Gigi, who is one of my favorite YouTubers, uh, she submitted a question. She said, congratulations on the new baby. Thank you, Terry. She said, I would love it if you do a work routine. She says, I think you work from home. Do you have a specific time that you write? Do you stick with it daily? I have trouble getting motivated, so I would love to hear about your day. Okay, so yes, I do have a specific time that I write, and sometimes that changes depending on my schedule, but I set aside time to write every single day, Monday through Friday. I used to work seven days a week. <laughs> I used to even like write on the weekends too. And if usually if I'm in the middle of a book and I'm just really excited uh, to write it, I will you know just write whenever I can. I do have that drive in me. Um, but lately, right now, my schedule is Monday through Friday. So yeah, I, I schedule about one hour to work on whatever writing project I'm working on. And that is one uninterrupted hour. And that can be hard sometimes when you have your family around you and everything. So if you can find a little corner of your house where no one can bother you or lock yourself in your bedroom, and um, just be really strict with yourself about not going on Facebook or Twitter or checking your email, you know, turn your phone on silent and just work on your project. You will develop the muscle over time of, of writing and you will crave that, you know, and if you don't do it, if you skip it, then you'll really miss it. So um, I really learned this discipline in that writing class that I took from uh, Alan Watt, The 90 Day Novel, which I took years ago, but that writing class gave me the discipline that I still have today. I will link all of Al's information below because his class is so awesome. And you don't even have to be in the LA area to take his classes. So I just, uh, you know, he has a lot of online courses too. So I think if you maybe, you know, if you're having trouble getting into a routine, sometimes it's nice to take a writing class and be among like-minded people. I think one of the hard things about being a writer or a blogger is that you work from home and you're alone. There's no, you know, camaraderie uh, in the workroom or <laughs> whatever. There's no like water cooler conversation with your colleagues. It's just you and it's sometimes hard to get motivated like that. So it is nice. I found it really lovely to have a class uh, that I that I went to and I still you know I want to take more classes I do enjoy the whole class environment a lot of people have requested that I do a day in the life video and um, I I will do one it's it's so tricky for me because you know I don't um, I have a policy I don't put my children on camera and they're such a big part of my day obviously so I thought how am I gonna do a day in the life video if I don't put them in the video but I think I can, you know, work it out a bit. So maybe I'll do a day in the life video and I can show you what it's like um, as a writer and, and how that fits into my work day. But I hope that helps. Just, I always just say to people, just do it. You know, just do it. Don't, don't let all the excuses come in and try to dissuade you from working on what you want to work on. You just have to be so disciplined with it. And I know that you can do it. Okay, Emily R writes, I would like to see a video on how you manage to be chic and poised and look after small children. I have two small boys and a part-time job and I don't feel I have time to make myself or my home look presentable. I'd like to live a chic life, but I feel like I'll have to wait until my boys have left home. Okay, Emily, you don't have to wait until your children leave home <laughs> to, um, to live a chic life. You just need to adapt it to what it means to you and your circumstances. And I go through phases um, where I have lots of energy and I am bursting with energy and enthusiasm. And you know, my home is just tip top shape and you know, I'm on top of myself with my appearance and everything. And then of course I also go through the valleys where you know, I'm not feeling well or I'm just exhausted or maybe I've been a bit sleep deprived. Like I'm sure when I have this third child, you know, right now I've got tons of energy 
and the kitchen's spotless at the end of the night and we wake up early and we all make our beds and we do, you know, and I'm, I'm able to do my Leno makeup look. And I know, I know it's coming. I know I'm going to have this third baby and I'm gonna be really tired. I know this obviously, because I've had two children before. It's hard those first few months. So I'm going to have to adapt my schedule. I think the thing about being chic is it's not looking a certain way or having your house perfect or any of the things that we think that um, being chic is. It's actually your mindset, it's your inner state of being and that will radiate out into your life circumstances. And you just have to do the best that you can possibly do. And it might be hard right now with two small boys, but it won't always be this hard. And as they get older, it will get easier. They'll have more energy. You'll be getting more sleep. Um, you'll just be used to being a parent more. And, and the more, as the years go by, you'll just be more comfortable and confident in that role. So you won't feel so frazzled. This is my personal experience. The reason why I write my Madame Chic books is because I, I so strongly believe in everything that I write. In, the 10 item wardrobe, in the no makeup look, in the quest to look presentable always, basically every single chapter from Lessons from Madame Chic is aimed at helping you to have a chic life, like to love your life and, and be passionate and vibrant in it and adapt it to whatever, whatever circumstances that you have. So the reason why, again, with the 10 item wardrobe, it's you know, if you are a stressed out, sleep deprived young mother and you just feel completely at your wit's end, well, you don't have to worry about your clothes. You don't need to, you're not standing in front of a closet full of hundreds of clothes and you're just, you're so overwhelmed, you don't know what to wear that you just put on your yoga pants again, right? The 10 item wardrobe takes care of that for you. You just have your 10 core items, don't even need to think about it. You just think about what's the weather today <laughs> and then you choose something Accordingly, and you put it on and you look presentable you don't it's it's aimed to make your life easier the Leno makeup look could be tinted moisturizer mascara and lip gloss and that's it and and that could just help you just you know feel a little bit better if you feel like you're looking tired whatever it is for you so I just I strongly urge people who are in a dark place with you know child rearing and and they just feel the stress of raising small children to seriously just take the concepts that I write about seriously. And even if you think I could never do that, you would be surprised. If I can do it, you could do it. So just try it and see what happens and just really change your attitude about it. You know, um, you just try to adopt a positive attitude about everything and, and go with the flow. And I am not some like chic, um, picture perfect airbrushed magazine light. I don't have this life. I think a lot of people think I have. I get haggard at the end of the day. I'll do a day in the life video. And then at the end of the day, you'll see what I'm talking about. Sometimes my friends and I, we text each other selfies um, of what we look like at the end of the day. And we just laugh hysterically because it's like our mascara is smudged. We just look so exhausted. That is real life. And you know, you just, you have to love it. Just, just love it and reinvigorate yourself. We have a wonderful community here on The Daily Connoisseur where you can, you can talk with like-minded people or people who are going through the same situation that you are. I just urge you to take the principles that I write about, you know, seriously and try them. Seriously try them and you can do it because, like I said, if I can do it, you can. The next question comes from Yang H. And she writes that she started to go to a lot of parties last December. She says, sometimes I feel I'm not sure how to interact with new people at a party. I would start a conversation, but the thing is, keeping the conversation continuously or finishing it pleasantly is so hard. Or even saying something inappropriate and later on realizing it when you get home. I'd love to hear from you and what other people think. Uh, Yang, I think this is such a great question because so many of us suffer from social awkwardness and I'm one of them. I, I think I can be socially awkward at times as well. And the reason why is because I am, I'm such, I'm an introvert and a bit of a hermit type, <laughs> type person, right? So when I go to a party, you know, if my friends are there, I have no trouble 
talking. But if it's a party full of all new people, that's stressful for most people, I think. And it is hard to keep a conversation going. What you have to remember is, I always ask myself this. I say, Jennifer, who are you trying to impress? Who? I'm not trying to impress anybody with like witty banter or, you know, saying some funny line or just being so, I just, I have to be me. And if people like me, they like me. If they don't like me, they don't like me. It's not my problem to worry about that. And it's not yours either. So I'm sure you are a lovely person, Yang. So when you go to a party and you feel that shyness, maybe that little knot inside your stomach and you don't really wanna talk or open up to people, or you do but you're afraid about how they'll judge you, just see what happens if you just talk to somebody, have a conversation with them, don't be afraid of silence like I like to write about. You know, your conversation might experience a lull. Just be, be fluid, don't be afraid of silence. Just be there presently with the person. You know, in the present moment. See where the conversation takes you. Don't worry about where it's going to go. And you never know what you're going to talk about. I think it's always a good idea to watch some current movies or a good movie or be reading something be current on political, or not political events, goodness gracious, not now anyway. <laughs> be au courant on um, current events and, and be able to, you know, have something to bring up and, um, and talk about that. I think a trap that a lot of people fall into is that they end up telling their life story or giggling or oversharing about themselves, about personal things with strangers. And again, this is the cultivate an air of mystery conundrum. We don't want to do that. Um, sorry, there's like a gigantic helicopter flying over the house. So the next time you're at a party, I just want you to see my face <laughs> and I want you to hear my words. Who am I trying to impress? You don't need to impress anybody. You are just awesome how you are and people will just naturally be attracted to you and your essence and just the way that you are. Even if it's, if it's a bit shy, that's okay. But just see where it takes you. See, see where the conversation goes. See what happens. And if it ends awkwardly, it ends awkwardly. That's okay. Just don't, you know, replay it in your head and worry about it so much. So I want you to just jump in with it and have fun with it. Okay, Amanda writes, I'd love your take on traveling, especially traveling overseas with small children. Your tips on maintaining poise during stressful events during travel, like dealing with plane delays and security at the airport, and how to be prepared. Okay, so last summer, I, you know, my husband's from England, and he was already in England, and so the girls and I flew by ourselves to England, which for me was a huge deal because that flight stresses me out anyway when it's just me. It's, I don't like being on airplanes for a long period of time. And um, so I, I was just so dreading that flight because I was, it was me and then it was my three-year-old and five-year-old. I think at the time they were two and four. So, oh my gosh, now the trash can's outside my house. I did and I thought, okay, Jennifer, you can do this. So I, I actually talked to one of my friends and I was just dreading it. I was so scared to fly alone with, with my two little girls. And I talked to one of my other friends who, she's English and she goes back and forth a lot. And she had just recently traveled with her two little ones who were even younger than mine. And I, I said, I, I'm so afraid to do this. What if, you know, one of them has a tantrum on the flight or what if they don't sleep or what if this, and she, her attitude was so good that she just reminded me again that my attitude was bad and that I needed to just shift it, basically. She said, oh no, it'll be, you'll be fine. You'll be perfect. Don't worry about it. It's going to be okay. And she was so reassuring to me because I was so sure that everything was going to go horribly wrong. And I thought, why am I doing this? Why am I setting myself up for disaster when it hasn't even happened? So, um, it ended up being, you know, a really pleasant experience. The girls were so, so well behaved. And um, 
they really were. I just, I felt, I said to them before we left, I said, girls, we are going on an epic journey, <laughs> okay? Like something you have never done before. So we are going, you know, we drove our car to the airport, we took the shuttle there, we got in the line, and you just take moment by moment. Don't stress if there's like long lines or if there's delays or anything. You just have to take it moment by moment with the kids. Now, here's something that I do. Okay, so. I don't let my children have a lot of screen time on the iPad, for example. So before we went on this trip, my older daughter loves the iPad, and um, but I never let her <laughs> play it. Um, so, but bef but I did bring it with me on the flight. So before the trip, she didn't play it at all for like a few months, really, before the trip. But on the flight, it was such a novelty to have the iPad. She was fine. She didn't play it the whole time. She played it for like, you know, 40 minutes or something. And then she would watch a movie and then that's it. And then my youngest one, she was just so excited to be there and she would watch movies and everything, but they were, they were well behaved. And um, there were no tantrums and there were no problems. The only thing that really stressed me out was on this 10 hour flight, they didn't sleep for the first seven hours. And it was a red eye too, it was at night. So I just, I mean, we were up. So yes, I could have gotten really stressed out, but I chose not to. At the end of the trip, when my husband picked us up at the airport, I looked like I had just, I was like Odysseus and I had just gone through an epic journey. I was so tired. I was like, I don't want to talk to anybody. <laughs> I, I just want to take a bath and just be secluded by myself. But it really wasn't that bad. So what I'm trying to say is approach it with a really positive attitude if you need to fly with your children, especially alone. You can do this, just prep them for it. And anything that you know that they'll love that will keep them occupied, deprive them of it for a little while before the flight so that when you bring it out at the flight, it's like a novelty for them. Okay, we are going to conclude part one right here and I will see you in the next video for part two on The Daily Connoisseur. Thank you, see you next time, bye.